Coming up next, a UFC Bantamweight tilt. Well, as far as American fighters go, they don't come a lot more popular than the former UFC lightweight champion, New Jersey's finest, Frankie the Answer Ed. Frankie Edgar is a phenomenal wrestler, but he's used that wrestling to become an even more dangerous fighter. He's developed fantastic boxing under Mark Henry. Ricardo Almeida has his jiu-jitsu on par with this striking. Also, the wrestling has made Frankie Edgar one of the best fighters the UFC has seen at 155 and now at 145 pounds. Well, DC, this is a true mixed martial artist of the highest order. You've watched the film. Hard for me to see much in terms of glaring weaknesses, and he believes he can react to anything that is thrown his way inside that arc. It's unbelievable because whenever you're trying to prepare for someone, you look for weaknesses. But when you watch this guy, you, nothing jumps off the page. When you think I have to go wrestle him, you realize very quickly that not only can he defend takedowns, he can also go and secure them sure. himself. He's that new breed of fighter that has been doing every discipline from the very start of his career. You know you're looking at a guy that will contend for a championship. And if our fighter meeting on Thursday is any indication, confidence not an issue for this young man coming in here tonight. And now our tale of the tape for this Bantamweight fight. More than five years apart with similar height and reach. To get us started with the official introductions, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC Bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting and out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 23 wins, 11 losses, and one draw. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Tom's River, New Jersey, USA, Frankie the Answer! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 20 wins, 8 losses, and 1 draw. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Marlon Chico Vera! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. The veteran Herb Dean draws the assignment here. Ready. All right, so here we go. Round one is underway. Very compelling matchup for fight fans around the world. Oh! Oh and now he lands a combination. Never look this good. Right hand upstairs. Oh, massive head kick there. We'll see if he can finish. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one? He gets caught by that straight punch. Beautifully landed by the opposite. The shot there, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed up. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talk to your toughness. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Oh, there he 
goes attacking that lead leg to the outside. Nasty kick there. Nasty leg kick. You gotta slow down your opponent. He knew his opponent wanted to move a lot tonight. This is the first step in getting him to slow down and fight at your pace. He's looking for that left hand. Not there. Cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. And there comes the separation now. 20 seconds left. Oh, I love the jab. I know you love the jab. That was a nice one. It's my favorite punch in all of fight. Good series of punches by him there. He has certainly had no trouble finding the range team. He is finding the target with everything he throws. He's mixing it up beautifully. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. Nice jab there. He told us on Thursday he wanted to break this dude's nose. That is certainly a step in the right direction. Mission accomplished. You are battering that nose. He's got to be careful dipping his head when he's throwing that jab. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg kick. Edgar gets caught with that punch. His chin is held up thus far. How's his opponent still standing? I mean, I have no idea. This fight is supposed to be over. And it might not be over now, but it's going to be over very soon. Well, you see all the graphic repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on them. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Just over three minutes to go. Well, he has really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive than we saw in round one. And now starting to find himself in the pocket. Good punch. Edgar's lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Oh, collar tie. Takedown defense holds up. Back to the feet now. Trying to establish that jab once again. Nice punch there by Edgar. Superman punch lands! Oh, big head kick lands. Edgar's shot is blocked. Now he gets a more dominant position with the underhook. He is going to start to drive knees over and over. You got to be careful here. You got to move. So he stuffs another quick entry to get Man, him on a single. Was a great single. Oh. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Oh, nice job working hard, posting, and getting back up. Oh, single collar tie here. When you're in the clinch, you can pull down the head and land these beautiful punches to the head. All right, there's the clap. Maybe time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He's got it for very bad. Now 
has to find one more strike to end the night. All right, so let us now check out some of the action in that round, DC. There was a whole lot of it, including a stunner upstairs that nearly closed the show. It was a lot of action. It was back and forth action, but the big moment was that big strike to the head that landed that put him on wobbly legs and then survival mode. Luckily, he made it to the end of that round. Oh, and he connects with a punch there, DC. You gotta like what you're seeing this one. I mean, the speed at which he throws is crazy. All right, single collar tie now. Left hand punch from the clinch. Nice head kick. Jab. Those are going to start to take their effect. Some nice back and forth action here. Man, he is sniffing out these takedowns from a mile away. Stuffed another shot there. Got the single collar tie. If your opponent has you in the clinch, pull it down on your head, landing punch after punch, you have got to clear that collar tie, reach back inside, and try to find space. That up the top, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Beautiful level to double edge side. Oh, how about the slam there? That one cannot feel good. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Just nasty at this point. Really swollen in that area now. Oh! Oh, he got it back! Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Seconds to go in the fight. Potentially working out. There, we'll see if there's more with that. Oh, he hurt. So holding on to him here, not doing a ton, perhaps just looking to recover. Now he's masterful from here. Oh, he went to a single switch to a high punch. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. They go the 15-minute distance. What a fight. All right, so a lot to like over the distance of that fight tonight. Clearly, we think we saw one guy win the fight and largely got it done with the striking. Yeah, he got it done with the striking. And that's exactly what he's known for. He's known as a guy that's so comfortable whenever he's in the stand-up. And that showed tonight as he truly outworked his opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score the contest. 29-28. For the winner by unanimous decision, Frankie the Answer Well, he did not get the finish that he certainly prioritized when we sat down with him in our fighter meeting, but a win is a win. He gets it done by unanimous decision. And he said he wanted a finish, but sometimes your opponent's not willing to play the game. In those instances, all you can do is control what you can control, and that's fight to the best of your ability. He did exactly that tonight.
Coming up next, it's a featherweight matchup between Jose Aldo and Makwan Amir Khani. All right, so here he is, one of the better offensive takedown guys we have in the UFC DC. And if anyone is well equipped to speak to this, it is you. The opponent knows what's coming. At least to this point in the UFC, no one's been able to stop. He just has to keep him away. Because the moment this guy gets close enough to either grab a leg or make body contact, right. now you're in trouble. He has a knowledge and an understanding of position from a lifetime of just all grappling, judo, wrestling, uh, Sambo. He does it all, and he has just so many ways to get you to the floor. This guy once told me that if he can get your leg, he's going to finish. Right. Because he's going to give you so many things to think about, you will not be able to process and keep up with him, and eventually you're on the mat. It's unbelievable to watch him apply that knowledge to the mixed martial arts fight. And as the wrestlers say, this is not a guy you want anywhere near your bracket. No, you don't want him in the bracket. All right, here he is, the owner of four famous burger locations throughout Brazil, but more saliently for this audience, the King of Rio, the former two-time UFC featherweight champion, the one, the only, Jose Aldo Jr. The only thing better than that hamburger is Jose <laughs> Aldo's fighting ability. He can strike with anybody. The leg kicks, Jose Aldo has a combination that he's done from the start of his career. Left body shot, right leg kick, and nobody ever checks it from... The knockout of Jeremy Stevens on that oh. beautiful liver shot. To finish in Moicano, Jose Aldo has a resume that is unmatched by many, which is why people consider him the greatest fighter 145's ever seen. Yeah, a lot of people buried Jose Aldo after the back-to-back -back losses against Max Holloway in 2017. He came back in a big way and has reestablished himself as a bona fide featherweight contender. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 17 wins, 9 losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Turku, Finland, Mach 1, Mr. Finland, Amirkani! And now it's introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A Muay Thai kickboxer, holding a professional record of 31 wins, 8 losses. He stands 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting the former UFC featherweight champion of the world, Jose Aldo Jr. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Lavin. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? You ready? All right, so here we go. This highly anticipated fight is now underway. Looks like a classic matchup of striker versus grappler. Am I simplifying things too much? In this instance, you aren't, because this is what got these two men to the show. Right. One guy is known for his diverse attack on the feet. The other guy is known for his ability to drag the fight to the mat and put his opponents in danger from the very start of the grappling exchanges. Oh, nice combination of elbows, and as a lot of fighters will say, there's no pad on the elbow. There's no pad on the elbow, and it cuts people. The more you elbow, the more you're going to see guys get cut. That's why everybody that fights Tony Ferguson just are dripping blood at the end of the fight. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. Well, a lot of people think he might have the best jab in this division, certainly using it effectively here. I mean, one of the best jabs in the world across all combat sports. The way that it just comes out, it's beautiful. The backside hand is always at the chin. The elbows tucked to the ribs. The jab goes out. The jab comes right back to the face. It's picture-perfect technique, almost like a Tybo class or something like that. Under three minutes now to go on the round. Oh, man, head kick lands. Oh, that's big. Amir Khani gets touched by that leg kick attempt. Right hand. Oh, that's a huge shot there, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed upright. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talks to your toughness. Punch 
there by Alba. So just over 20 total strikes and counting him. Now landed for the King of Rio, Jose Alba. Just out of range with the big right hand. Visibly limping here. A oh, little single collar tie there. 90 seconds now to go in round one. Left hand one time punch. Try to establish that jab. Big knee. Oh! Nice strike to the midsection glances. And there he goes again, working off that beautiful jab. He continues to keep his opponent at distance. I mean, keeps him at bay with that beautiful, precise... Whoa! Move. That is his biggest strike as he has landed thus far tonight. Big, massive shot lands. Look at how tough his opponent is, though. Still standing, still in their fight. 20 seconds left. Strong kick to the outside of that lead leg for him there. You do not want to eat too many of those. No, you can't. He does not wind up on that kick, but he somehow is managing to land it so much more. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. A stunner there with the head strike midway through. Nearly got him out of there for good. Almost got him out of there. He hurt him badly. He had his opponent hurt real bad. Now his opponent's walking back to his corner. Everybody looks confused. They don't know what they're supposed to do to try to change the way that this fight is going. in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one? Counter attempt here, but a miss. Oh, and there is the kick. That one checked by Alvin. Straight right hand, no good. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Head kick. The right hand just misses. Hook to the head, lands flush there by Alba. Can't take many of those, but check. Back and forth we go. Amir Khani's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. Trying to establish that jab once again. So a much different approach for him here in this second round. He was a little bit tentative in round one, a little bit of a feeling out process. Now he has clearly found his rhythm, found the range. We'll see if he can continue with more activity here in round two. Nice punch by Aldo. Nice leg kick. by that one big leg kick. Kick to the body by Amir Khan. Oh, oh, lands and maybe time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He's got him hurt very bad with his head kick. Now he has to find one more strike to end the night. Oh, huge kick to the body. body. Now goes in, here's the takedown. Under a minute now to go on the round. Lands the grounded pound strike here. Gets up again here, but Hurton. These are unofficial, but 61 total strikes have landed for Jose Alba. And connected with 48% accuracy against Jose Alba. He comes forward with a flying knee that just missed hitting the target flush. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? All right, 
And so his legendary chin holds up despite getting knocked down in that previous round. DC, take us through the hot line. He's as tough as they come. There has not been a guy that can take shots like this. Most times, the night would be over. And gladly, gladly over after you take a shot like this. But this man's just too tough. Some people say he's too tough for his own good. He would not agree with you. He wants to fight. You ready? You ready? Third and final round here. Oh, shot to the body connects there. He hasn't really thrown too many body strikes in this fight. But now, as this fight goes on, he is not discriminating. He got him! Oh, my goodness. What a fight. Well, it's not every day in the UFC that you see a fight ended due to a leg kick, but that one was absolutely devastating. He took away that lead leg of his opponent, who became a one-legged fighter, and then it became just a matter of time. So, somewhat anticlimactic here tonight, but not for the winner, as he gets one of the bigger TKO wins of his UFC career. So a seminal moment for him here tonight as he gets the victory by TKO. Huge result inside the Octagon tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has going to stop for this contest. At 18 seconds of round number three, declaring the winner by TKO, Jose Aldo Jr. Well, there he is, the man of the hour. And you got to think this dude's going to get a serious Instagram push tonight after the win by TK. Oh, he's going to get a massive push because he hurt his opponent and he pressed his foot down in the gas until he got that finish. That was amazing. It is a lightweight showdown between Charles Dubronx Oliveira and Khabib Nurmagomedov. Well, when you're fighting this guy, DC, you know as well as anyone, it makes for a suffocating night at the office. Here he is, Khabib Nurmagomedov, putting his status as one of the best fighters on the planet on the line yet again tonight. He does it every time he steps foot in the octagon. When they say it's suffocating, they talk about the strength of Habib. Even our teammates say, it does not feel like you're going with a lightweight. You right. feel like you're fighting a light heavyweight. And what do you expect from a guy that spent his childhood wrestling with Bear? <laughs> he is so strong. He's so physical in the hard work and the intensity of which he trains with only shows when he steps foot in the octagon. One of the most skilled guys the UFC has ever seen. We always talk about the wrestling and the grappling and the sambo, right. but don't sleep on Habib Nurmagomedov striking. And we saw shades of that in the McGregor fight. Javier Mendez says at times he likes to go southpaw in training. He can't hold you down. Ah, he can't hold me down, but it's okay. Sure. It's okay. You can't win them all, Habib. Uh -huh. 
All right, so here he is, one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next when the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he could take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So he does not in have this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. And now our tale of the tape for this lightweight fight. Oliveira is 30. Nurmagomedov is 31. Oliveira will have a four-inch reach advantage. We send it inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a grappler holding a professional record of 29 wins, no losses. He stands five feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of the Republic of Dagestan, Russia, Habib the Eagle. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 34 wins, 9 losses, and 1 no contest. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles Dobrox. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean has drawn the assignment here. Ready. Ready, ready to go here, round one. Charles Dubronx Oliveira, one of the top active and accurate submission threats in UFC history. He's in that patented upright stance as usual. Charles Oliveira trying to continue the trend of first round finishes here tonight. Oh, beautiful jab by him there, really taking advantage of what is an obvious edge and reach. Nurmago Medov gets caught with that punch. Don't be afraid. Well, he told us on Thursday you don't get paid to fight 15 minutes. To that end, early takedown is there. His ideal fight is a grind as ugly as he can make it. It's better for him. And with this early takedown, he ensures that he can start to wear the gas tank for a long time. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Oh! Just missed on the overhand left. Good head movement there. Ooh, big shot land. Right hook to the head block. Well, you start to really worry about the wrestling and quick level change. Oh, he see. went single. Rotate head outside this dude. Oh! He flipped him over the top. What a fantastic takedown. Welcome to the Cormier Express. <laughs> nice shot over the top there. Transition to the ankle pick. Now we will see where he goes from here. Got the ankle pick. Let's see how he advances from this position. Oliveira gets caught with that punch. Not the easiest guy in the world to hit, but he got caught there. So just over. Oh, that is as good as it gets on the feet. His opponent in a lot of trouble now. That was Kenny Velasquez's punch of choice. Every time he landed that overhand right, he hurt people bad. And this guy has to be hurt very badly again. another takedown and he's doing it over and over again what i am a massive fan of is his cardio 
the ability to be able to keep this pace over and over as he hits his takedown attempts. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Oliveira doing the right things defensively. His double leg shots. Oh, massive slam. That'll change the complexion of this one. Take a look back at some of the replays from that last one. Unbelievable to see these high-level competitors get in each other's face, tuck their chin, bite down on the mouth guard, and just let it all hang out over the course of five minutes. All right, five minutes down. Here we go with Good round five. two. Charles Good. Oliver Good. versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. And he lands a punch there. Pretty good connection by him. Great connection. He's in a great flow right now. That's a nice connection with that punch. It's one thing to have an edge in reach. It's another to take advantage. Nice oh! look. And landing some nasty strikes. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Good shot there to land the takedown. Nice shot by Nermago Meta. Reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Doesn't gain top position. What a beautiful takedown, but he just waited for one second, and his opponent reacted before he could secure top position. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. The problem with rolling leg lock in MMA, man, is you get beat up, especially and if he's you're out. a little bit hurt. Well, he's staying pretty effective here, fighting off of looks like a potential submission attempt here. Submission. The problem with rolling leg lock in MMA, man, is you get beat up, especially if you're a little bit hurt. Now he's okay. Now he can escape. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely done. Now potentially working on a submission instead. Inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Ten seconds remain in round two. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round. Saved by the bell. So back to the stool. Mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, so a lot of highlights over those previous five minutes. DC, take us through the replay, if you will. A lot of good action, but punching led the dance. Punching was the thing that stood out to me. That allowed him to take control of the run. You ready to fight? Ready. Third round underway. Nermago Medov gets hit with a kick. That one appeared to land flush. Wow, huge head kick. And he connects there with a punch, so pretty good striking display by him thus far. He throws everything so straight and so accurate. That's a 
pretty good right hand there by your teammate that you can that off. You're so worried about the wrestling that when the hands come, you're not expecting it. And Habib lands early and he lands off. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So there he is, your winner by submission tonight, and that is how you put the rest of the division on notice. A huge result for him here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop for this contest at two minutes, one second of the third round. For the winner, by submission, Charles the Bronx Arena! All right, so what a performance by this young man here tonight as he gets the win by way of submission. He certainly put a lot of stock into getting the finish tonight, and he did just that. Congratulations. It was very tough fight. But he knew that if he did everything right, he can get to his position, which is the ground, and he would be able to find a finish by submission tonight. He did just that. Coming up next, it is a UFC welterweight championship showdown between Alex Cowboy Oliveira and Tyron Woodley. Well, a long winning streak may guarantee you a title fight in other divisions, certainly doesn't at 170 pounds, but now with all the contenders behind him, there is one man left standing. It is this man, the number one welterweight contender, now getting his shot at the dominant champion. And he believes without a shadow of a doubt that he is the best 170 in the world. And he is out to prove it right here, right now.
He is the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, and in a division that has so much depth in that top 15, it's even more remarkable that this man has remained the hunted. The question tonight, with a powerful challenger out of that blue corner, can he walk away and still? All right, now let's get you our tail of the tape for this welterweight championship fight. More than five years apart, with similar height and reach. We send it inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC welterweight championship the world introducing first fighting out of the blue corner this man is a mixed martial artist holding professional record of 19 wins seven losses and one draw he stands five feet nine inches tall weighing in at 170 pounds fighting out of st louis missouri usa presenting the challenger Tyron, the chosen one one and now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 21 wins, 12 losses, one draw, and two no contests. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world. All right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to bear my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, on a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, match your hands, and not fight. that we dream of as MMA fans. Big ball from Crush Land. Now he gets back to range. Tags him with the straight. Nice job there by Oliveira. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. And now he's got that tie clinch. We'll see what he can do with it. that comes from him throwing that kick. Nice defense there, huge block. Great punch. Beautiful body kick. All right, single collar tie now. Nice combination of punches to the head now in the clinch. Oh, he better start moving. He can't take too many of those uppercuts. Nice head kick. Such a sneaky head kick he did not recognize it was coming high, and now he's got a hurt 
bad. Well, it's one thing to have length. It's another thing to use it, and he does it as well as anyone. Nice kick there by the chosen one. Oh, and there's another leg kick for good measure. So doing a really good job with that weapon here tonight. And if you're trying to slow your opponent down... Oh, he hurts! Oh, so just over 20 total strikes, as you see there, have now landed for Tyron Wood. Start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. And you hear the crowd react. Fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish this fight. 45 seconds remain in the round. Oh, that one even hurts to watch. Heavy leg kick lands flush. So, under 30 seconds to go in what has been a pretty entertaining and active first round. Final seconds of round one. Round two is next. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Woodley's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. That was oh, over the top. This fight's going to be over this. What a great way of mixing up his attack. He didn't stay the course. He mixed it up. He went high with his like he's going low. Very bad. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here, and as a result, has really picked up the pace in round two. I mean, he's cutting him down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Good punch, Lance. Wow. Oh, to the body. Woodley's kick attempt there blocked. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Look at him drive his shin into the corner of body with that body kick. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Oh, big knee! Dude's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. into that kick. Oh, big This might be the biggest shot of this entire fight. He landed a massive hook to put his opponent on wobbly legs. Final seconds here. Oh! Yeah, that was 
just a gorgeous shot to end the fight right there. I'm not even sure the opponent really saw it coming. So back to the drawing board for him. But for the winner, this is certainly exactly what he was looking for here tonight. All right, we'll take a look back at the highlights. You know we're going to find that nasty head kick somewhere in this highlight rip. Just an incredible result for him here tonight. A very nice head kick to finish the fight. But don't ignore all the work he did with his hands. And give credit to the opponent. The opponent was in there every step of the way. And in order to get a fight of the night like you got tonight, both guys have to be willing to participate. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliotta has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 57 seconds of round number 2. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, Alex Cowboy Oliveira! Right, so a lot of people like the challenger tonight, but it goes to the champion. Congratulations to the still UFC welterweight king. And going to take a big effort, I would think, to dethrone this. Yeah, he is just a great fighter. He does everything so well. And the confidence that he brings into the octagon on fight night is unmatched by anybody in this division.